What's up, mother workers? And that's my best friend, my best friend, my best friend. Go best friend. What's up, y'all? So, um, this has been um a video that we said we were gonna do for a couple of weeks now because we've had so many questions about the whole IUI process and different things within the IUI process so we decided to go ahead and make a video about it so to inform you guys because of course that's what we said we wanted our channel to be about um is to inform people about LGBT and the IUI process of what we can tell you um we've had a lot of questions between Facebook Instagram and YouTube itself with different questions we jotted some of them down that you've asked and we've also come up with some of our own um so yeah the first important thing that you need to know about IUI is the process. The process, sorry, get serious. <laughs> the, pro <laughs> the process is. So the first thing we did was after we found out I had endometriosis, we were pretty much told go to a fertility doctor get yourself checked out make sure you, that you can conceive a child after this surgery so we went to we went online researched some fertility clinics in georgia we found a one Atlanta center for reproductive medicine um we'll drop their website down in the link below um, um they have i think a monthly free seminars where you can go and learn about um, IVF, IUI, the success rates of them both, how they both work, and what, what all that they do. Um, so we went to that, and there they gave us a voucher to get a free egg reserve test. The egg reserve test um, basically just lets you know, like, your egg count, basically. Right. It should be at least 3.0. Mine was, like, 3.2. Right. And then mine was, like, a 2... Point three, something like that, which is considered very low for our age. But mine was good, so the doctor advised us that I should go first um, to give us a better chance of conceiving. So when we got those results back, we did an HSG, which is a procedure where they basically do an IUI, but with not not with semen, with ink. So they insert ink into your cervix. And it pushes through your fallopian tubes into your ovaries just to make sure there's no blockages or you don't have any problems with your tubes. He said my tubes were perfect. They see that usually the, oh, with the HSG, they see it on the screen. So when they insert the dye, as they're inserting the dye, they're also doing like an ultrasound mm -hmm. to um, show where the dye is going. And if once the dye goes in and out or in and through, then um, it basically shows that it's either good or it's not good and they can always see it on the screen and then from there they'll go ahead and say that hey I think IUI is good or I think IVF is good right so we were pretty much praying that IUI would be a good fit for us because it was the cheapest process that we could afford right um we did that April 29th 2016 so yeah we almost making a year very soon. Year next month. Um, results were good, like I said. So they cleared us to do IUI. The first thing we had, we got approved to do IUI, is to get a ton of blood work. It was a ton of blood work. We were at LabCorp for like two, two days. Oh. Actually, when we first started this channel. That's what we started recording. We had just left LabCorp mm -hmm. from getting our blood work done. And that was like back in August, September. Mm -hmm. And so they, they test for a everything. ton of different diseases. Make sure you don't have any STDs or anything that could affect you or the baby or the pregnancy. They tested her as well. We got all the same tests. So we did a lot of testing. Yeah. Um, the next thing we had to do was get cleared by a, a counselor. Um, so we went to go see a lady. She was in Dunwoody. I'm not sure what her name was. She was really nice. Um, and we really just talked to her about make sure we had an understanding of the process and that we saw eye to eye on how we're going to raise our kids and how we're going to explain to them how they got here. She gave us some really good book ideas, which we bought all of them because we want to make sure that our children know where they came from. I don't want to have them feel tricked or 
confused about why they have two moms so she was really good for that and she cleared us immediately that was great. We were really nervous because mm -hmm. we we're we're young, so we didn't know. We thought that it was, might have been like an automatic disqualifier. We're only twenty three and twenty four, right. so um, and it's not like we have these amazing salaries. I mean, we do right. we do we do well, but we don't do great. You right. said we could do better, but um, she didn't really care about any of that. She just wanted to make sure that we were decent human beings and that we were gonna mentally take, sound. Right, and gonna be able to take care of the other baby. Pretty much. So um, that went. Like, that was a breeze. Um, then we had to basically they, they had to get back, get reported back to ACRM, and um, on the first day of yeah, we had to wait for my period. Right, we had to wait for her period. So on the first day of her period, and like basically from the evaluation, the council evaluation to the IUI process, the first one, everything started moving like really, really fast, and uh, to the point where we got scared that we were gonna miss the dates because with IUI. It's like everything it's really has time to sensitive. be perfect. Right, it's time sensitive. Um, so we end up calling them. We had to call ACRM on the first day of her period. It was a baseline check on the third day of my period, but I had to call them to schedule the appointment. Right. So the baseline check was an ultrasound. And it was a, what is it called? They went inside for the ultrasound. They didn't do it on the right. outside. Right, right. Uh, um, so they just wanted to make sure that I was progressing in my cycle the way I should and did they do blood work? Um, they did do blood work that day um, because they, they did blood work basically to, to find out when you were going to end up ovulating. Yes. So um, we did that then we went in on the mid cycle check mm -hmm. and that's when they told us basically okay everything is looking good. Clomid is a drug that basically helps your follicles develop okay. So I took Clomid for five days after I left that mid-cycle check. Once I was done with that Clomid, I went in for a mid-cycle ultrasound. They did a mid-cycle check where they did an ultrasound of my ovaries to make sure that I had the appropriate amount of follicles. Um, the first cycle I had one. It was about, how big was it? Go back to the video. Yes. And the second cycle I had two. One was a bit smaller, but I mean it don't matter. You can receive off of one, but the more you have, the better. Yes. But generally, you only have one unless you're on Clomid. You probably will make more than one, which could possibly give you multiples. So we'll get to that later. Um, now what else? We then after that we would test. Blah. take ovulation tests and they would give me basically a date if you don't ovulate before this day go pick up your trigger shot the trigger shot is basically a shot that you take to make yourself ovulate right both times I had to take it because I didn't ovulate when they wanted me to right so and with the trigger shot um so her projected ovulation date was I believe it would have been um it was supposed to be Saturday or Sunday mm -hmm. now um we tested her all the way up on Saturday. We didn't get the smiley um, saying that she would ovulate within 24 hours. So we went on Saturday and picked up the trigger shot. Um, and we used Clear Blue Digital. All right. So we'll drop ovulation that in test. the description below too. Exactly. Um, but we used Clear Blue Digital. We ovulate. You're supposed to ovulate 24 hours once you get that smiley. So we didn't get the smiley. So we immediately went and picked up the, um, the trigger shot. And we're supposed to do it the morning before the IUI. Right. So we end up doing it Saturday morning for the, this this is for the second IUI. For the second IUI we end up doing it Saturday morning and we went in we did a Saturday morning around like ten o'clock. We went in on Sunday morning around ten o'clock and did the IUI. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, the IUI we didn't record that one but that one went so smooth. Only thing it was the wait time was a little bit long and we got a little scared that um we might miss that window. But um, they told us that it would be 24 to 36 hours. So we, with that 36 hour mark, we wouldn't have missed it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, and 
it went just like the first one did if you go check it out we'll drop that in the description below too our live iui insemination um we, we'll drop that below but it went we just, just, we just had a nicer doctor right and and i i was able to actually insert the the sperm mm -hmm. um into her and it made it more personable she let us keep the vow she was a lot more positive and it was like a lot more it was i loved it, the whole experience mm -hmm. it was it was more it, it was more enjoyable the first time right. it was like he didn't really talk. He didn't say much. Right. The second time, she was very engaged and let us know exactly what she was doing. So, right. that was great. Right. Um, so, a week after that, I got a progesterone check. Both times, my progesterone was perfect. If it wasn't good, I would have taken progesterone suppositories. Right. Which I can't really tell you about because I didn't have to take them. But, um, they, they basically, your progesterone is basically... What keeps you, what keeps the... What keeps you from having a miscarriage? Right. Early on miscarriage. So if it's low, they would definitely give you supplements. I didn't have that problem, but some people may. Yeah, some people have had that problem. Yeah, some people have. So, um, but um, then a week after, uh, exactly a week after the progesterone check is the pregnancy test. Ha ha! Doom. Pregnancy test, which we got it on November 13th. So that's the two week wait. This was the first time ever in the two years that we've been trying been trying that we did not test before the two week wait was up um we didn't test because of the catastrophic um experience that we had the first iui if you don't know our first iui ended in a chemical right but we got a positive at home right. the next morning i woke up and i was bleeding and we were devastated so the second time we, we said we wasn't not, gonna do exactly. it no matter what so we waited for that call and honestly, that two week wait went by we extremely fast. We didn't fast. talk about it. We didn't think about like, it. Like we, we just, just kept moving along our day. Like if it came to our mind, we just shut up and kept it moving. Um, then that's when we got that phone call saying that our progesterone. I mean that her H C G level was um at a two thirty nine. Um, and which was great, which was great, meaning that she's pregnant. Anything above a five means you're pregnant. Um, but if it is at a five, it's at two weeks pregnant, it's not, it's not likely the that, best that it's a viable pregnancy, right? Um, so, um, so a week after that, I got an ultrasound to see the heartbeat, make sure that the pregnancy was in the right place. Um, ACRM, I don't know about other fertility clinics, but they monitored me. Um, and took my beta and did ultrasounds constantly up until I was um, between her getting that positive pregnancy test, that high beta count, to my um, first OB appointment. Her first B OB appointment, really right For before then, they um they made sure that her they tested her like every week, every week, four days to a week to ensure that her numbers were still rising. Um, and if they weren't, then they kept they made us keep coming in until we actually saw the heartbeat. After we saw the heartbeat, they didn't test for beta anymore. Um, and from then on, I think we saw the heartbeat. We saw the baby twice at ACRM. And then after that, they released us to go on to our, um, our, OB. our OB. And that was at about 10 weeks. And I think from then on, that's when it started to become like a actual pregnancy. And then at 12 weeks, that's when we actually saw the baby on the monitor. And it actually looked like a baby. And of course, we recorded that too for you guys. So speaking we'll drop of, that below too. Speaking of betas, um, if you haven't looked at our previous trying to conceive videos and IUI, our betas scared the crap out of us. They were up and down, up and down, up and down. But we realized why when we finally got our ultrasound because the doctor said that we were trying to have a twin and that other smaller. Uh, uh, twin? No, 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 Sad. follicle. Oh. But it never got to develop, so that's why my betas were like out of whack. But so that happens to you, don't freak out because we definitely did. All right, I shed a lot of tears about this, and the doctor, the, the 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 nurses assistants and the people who called me weren't very clear about what they were trying to say. One lady called and was like, "Well, it didn't quite double, so you might want to just prepare for the worst." You don't tell somebody that. All right. So, I mean, but like, I mean, clearly we're here. Um, and it, it, it ended up working for the best. So if you are going through this process, my biggest thing, I don't know about her, which I'm pretty sure she'll agree. My biggest advice would be to be patient. Don't 
freak out, try try not to stress and be positive. Because throughout our process, the first time it was stress, stress, stress. We were freaking out. We were like, I mean, we we're trying to be positive, but you still had that negative doubt in the back of your mind. Speak positively at all times, because it, it really does make a difference. Uh, especially going through the process, because I know a lot of people, it's, it comes so easily in it. it. It's aggravating because a lot of people get so pregnant at the drop of a hat. And it's like, with us, it was, it came hard. And I know a lot of, even straight couples and lesbian couples and gay couples, they, they have issues with it. They have fertility issues because we only have one partner. We can't try as much as we want to. So I, my biggest thing is if you are going through the process, be patient. Stick together through the whole process if you have somebody. If not, get close to family. And, you know, we're here for you. If, you. if you need anything, we're here for you no matter what. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is how much it costs. Yes. Um, the bulk of our amount, well, that we're going to tell you, don't freak out. The bulk of this amount is sperm. We bought four valves, um, all the testing that we had to do, and our counseling. So, when we say this number, it's not just the IUI. The IUI is only like $800 by itself, but you have to go through all of this testing in order to get to IUI. Right. The actual IUI date. It's like $500. Right. But with all the testing, the ultrasounds, the medicines, yeah. all of this, this is included in this price that we're about to give you. We spent a little under 5000 for two rounds of IUI. All right. If we didn't have to do two, it might have been like probably under 3000 Yeah. Um, like, now, with that being said, um, there are insurances out there, health insurances out there that do cover IUI. I know a lot of people that they might cover two or three or something they, like they that. They reimburse you for up to three right. rounds of IUI. We don't have that type of insurance at all. Um, I wish we unfortunately, did. Unfortunately, <laughs> because I would love that money back. But, I mean, it was worth it. It was definitely worth it. Um, what about four valves of sperm, okay? We didn't need to, but I wanted to be you know, safe and not sorry. Right. And when it comes to my turn, we want to be able to have the same donor. Right. So she'll so, have two for her turn as well. Right. So, um, the bulk of our expenses came from the sperm. Right. And if you have a partner, uh, like a man, not, I need a partner. You have a man, like a, a good friend, it's cheaper to bring him on in there and do that thing. Just, just have a lawyer involved as well because you don't want to get, you know parental just rights because of the shipping up. because of the shipping and everything like that but it still is a long process if you do have a friend because at that point it still has to go through and they have to wash it they have to count it so it, i mean it's still a process regardless of if you get it from a donor a a, a, a live a, donor a live or donor a, or a bank um the bank that we went through was um seattle sperm seattle bank. sperm bank we'll drop that in the description down below as well mm -hmm. um it took us two tries. We only used one valve of sperm per cycle. All right. One valve. And it was like this much sperm in it. And it was pink because that's what they, some kind of preservative they put in there or something. Yeah. But it was like literally that much. So. It was yeah. like 40 million. That's all it or took. 53 million. Yeah, we got pregnant off of the first time now. Hold on, wait. The first time. It was 53 million. It was 53 million. The second time, it was like 36. Six. It was it was in the thirties. It was 30s. it was it was significantly lower in our opinion the second time, so that gave us a little less hope, but it still worked. All right. So. So. But yeah. Um. But um. Pretty sure I know we you guys. Everything. Yeah, we did. But I know you guys are wondering. Um. Right now, as of today, we are twenty weeks and one day. So we are officially at the halfway point in this pregnancy. <laughs> we have. 20 more weeks to go <laughs> but we're halfway there and it's like so exciting it's um, so surreal like it is. it's it's crazy like i can't even i still can't believe it like we were trying it, it was almost coming around to a third year right. of this but we didn't have to thank god um i mean and when i say our third year we were trying at home with a live donor right and it was not working at all whatsoever like i tried with twice she went twice. I was I went like six times. Yeah. It so work. it was it was it was getting stressful. But um we are going for an appointment this week, um, which is our 20 week ultrasound um scan, which is the anatomy scan as well. 
and we will definitely be recording and posting um sometime this weekend it probably won't be on thursday um but we're gonna try like i said to put up at least three videos a week um and you know so we can keep you know you guys coming um as of today i think we're at 190 so we have like 10 more subscribers 10 more we need 10 more of y'all to subscribe so we can go ahead and get this giveaway going uh if you don't know about the giveaway go watch some of the last videos but just to let you know and just in case you don't feel like going to go do that you need to <laughs> be subscribed you need to comment on some videos and like some videos those are the three main things we would like you to also follow us on instagram or snapchat if you have them if not that's not a requirement we just need to make sure that you are subscribed you are liking the videos and you are commenting um that's about it and i can't wait to get this giveaway going and to the new subscribers welcome we thank you so much for coming to our channel to the old subscribers y'all keep us laughing and y'all keep us up? doing this right <laughs> the comments have me rolling for real it's like seriously <laughs> yeah but we want to say thank you seriously um and like i said we'll go ahead and drop everything in the description down below if you have any other questions that we haven't addressed that we might have forgotten um go ahead and put that in the comments as well um thank you so much for watching and have an amazing week. Yes.